In the last video, we saw how to inject failures in an EC2 instance using Gremlin. In this video, we are going to look at how to leverage AWS's newest service, which is AWS Fault Injection Simulator, into creating experiments on EKS. Most of you wanted me to try out Chaos Engineering on EKS, and I'm going to try out AWS FIS on EKS directly. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Like always, we are going to start with an architectural diagram and then we are going to see how we can run FIS within EKS. I'm going to create an EKS cluster. In fact, I created the cluster and kept it ready. It's an empty cluster right now. So I'll be running it within a public subnet and I have my own VPC and then there is an AWS account which I'm going to leverage. I'm going to use the AWS fault injection simulator which is the chaos engineering service within AWS. We are going to run experiments on EKS. For now, there is one experiment specifically for EKS, which is to terminate an, a node group. These are like terminating EC2 instances. I have created an EKS cluster with two nodes. In order to run FIS experiments on EKS, we need to provide some specific roles so that FIS can terminate instances within your cluster. You need to be very careful when you are doing this in production because there will be high level of access which will be provided to FIS to terminate instances or maybe inject faults, etc. We are going to leverage STS to assume roles so that FIS can assume role and then connect to the EC2 instances whenever required. Also, finally, I'll be deploying the Istio application which we saw in the Istio video in the same EKS cluster so that we can get a sense of how the pods are behaving within the cluster. So at first, I'm going to create all the pods, the Istio installation, etc. If you see here, I have my EKS cluster ready. It's just an empty cluster. So there is nothing running right now. So if I do a kubectl get nodes, it will tell us what are the different nodes. There should be two different nodes. So see that uh, there are two different nodes. There should be no pods right now. And there is no Istio present in here. I'm going to install Istio so that we have a running application within the cluster. We will deploy the same book info application so that it's easier for us. So this is the installation command for Istio. So let's run the installation. Once Istio is installed, I'll be just deploying the book info application which came with Istio. Meanwhile, let's go to the AWS console and then create these experiments. In order to go to fault injection simulator, you can just type FIS and it will directly take you to AWS FIS from here. We can create experiment templates and we can run these templates whenever we want it. So this is how the template looks like. So I might have to provide a description. So I'm going to call this description as FIS uh, EKS experiment. So there is this IAM role which I just talked about earlier. In order to create IAM roles, I need to create some policies so that FIS can access my specific resources. So if I click on the learn more option here, there are some policies and then STS. So I'm going to the step two. Step two says set up an IAM role for the AWS FI service. This is what we require. And the first thing is the policy. This is the policy which we have to create for the FIS specifically for accessing some of the specific resources. So I'm going to create a IAM policy. So let's go to IAM. So inside here, I'm going to create a new policy. Let's go to policies and create a new policy. I have the JSON copied already. So I'm going to paste the JSON message here so that it automatically gets converted into a visual editor format. So if I come back to the visual editor, this is just refreshing and you can see that all my accesses, whatever I require are all present here. So that's it, right? I mean, there are additional accesses which are present here based on your requirement, just remove them, whatever you just require because FIS provides a lot of other capabilities apart from terminating EKS. It can also introduce latencies. It can uh, do database related tests as well. So right now I'm going to use only EKS. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So let's go and review it and create the policy. So I will have to provide a name for this policy. I'll call this as FIS policy and I'm going to create the policy here. You can also create a role and then attach this particular policy. I'm going to leverage an existing role just to make sure I can use it. 
so there is a role called uh, uh, the cluster whatever we created right so let's go to tp hyphen cluster that's what we created so see that there is a tp cluster service role so i'm going to leverage the same role which is assigned already to vks and i'm going to attach my policy here so whatever policy we just created i'm just going to attach it so the fis policy is to allow fis for this eks instance so i'm just attaching the same policy into this role here so the policy got attached in addition to that we also might have to set up the trust relationship which i just mentioned so we will have to provide the trust relationship for our sts role so let me copy this and there is this tab called trust relationship so i might have to add it here so there's already some trust relationship for eks and eks fargate so that the roles are there so i'm going to add that here so i'm going to add fis specific principle so that when i assume roles my FIS service will be able to assume it because I'm going to allow it here as a trusted policy. So let me update the trusted policy and I think I'm done, right? The same policy can be used in this uh, here. So I'm going to leverage the same, the TP cluster role. So that is the role which we require here. The next thing is the actions. As a part of actions, we are going to provide what experiments we need to run. So right now, I already mentioned you, we are going to run something called terminate a node group. We are going to terminate a, a node group in EKS. There are other experiments like rebooting EC2, stop EC2, terminate EC2, drain instances within ECS, like removing instances within ECS, injecting some API errors or injecting fault or injecting latencies within our APIs, database failovers, etc. You can also have custom commands which you can send them as well. So I'm going to leverage the EKS terminate node group because I want to run it on EKS. So I'll give uh, the name of this particular action as EKS um, terminate, right? Description is optional. The moment I selected an action type, I got uh, something called as target automatically populated. So based on the type of instance I selected, my targets are automatically populated. See here, my EKS node group automatically came in, right? And if I select here, I can see already something. I can edit it, uh, but first let's, finish this action the next parameter is instance termination percentage so how much percentage of your instances need to be terminated so i want half my instance to be terminated uh, right now i have only two node groups so i want to terminate one so i am just putting it as 50 right and let me save this so the action got saved uh, now coming to the target uh, the target got added by default now i'm going to edit this node group target so that i can provide something called resource id so resource id is nothing but selecting which eks group we said EKS, but we did not say which AKS cluster, right? Uh, that's what is selected here. So I can select the resource ID here, which is the EKS cluster. If I have multiple clusters, then I can run um, chaos across these clusters, or I can provide the count of how many clusters I want to randomly select. If you have EC2 instances, you will select all the EC2 instances in this space, and you will provide a count or you will provide all, right? It's up to you. So let me save this. Uh, the next one is stop so when should i stop my experiment right so let's say you have created uh, when when an ec2 instance got terminated you created new ec2 instance and there is a cloudwatch alarm for it so you can stop experiments after that so you can have configurations for that here i'm not adding any um, stop condition right now but i'm just going to create the template right so let me go and create the template so that uh, we are done with the fis part so I think we are done, right? So it says you have successfully created the experiment template. So coming back to our uh, Istio installation, let's go and check uh, the installation is completed. Uh, let's apply the label and then deploy the uh, applications there so that we can run the experiments because we have the uh, experiment templates ready. So I'm just applying the cube CTL configuration so that I can deploy the application. So let me split our uh, window so that we can see what's happening across right so let me just minimize or maximize this let's see so when i do kubectl get pod i should see all my applications running so you can see that uh, details page the product uh, page the ratings review microservices all these are running so these are my microservices also there are some services which are specific to istio right so if i uh, do kubectl get pod and then i'll say all namespaces I should be able to see all the pods across namespace so see that there are cube system uh, pods there are like core dns cube proxy there are um, there are like pods specific to grafana ingress egress kiali dashboards prometheus etc right and also grafana 
So all these are different pods which are running in the cluster, right? All these are running in the node groups which we have. So let's go to the EC2 to see uh, what are the uh, node groups, right? Let's open EC2. So there are two instances which are running and these are the two different nodes, right? Uh, three, uh, two different node groups. So for our cluster, which is TP cluster. So right now all these are running. Now when we run the experiment, one of the instances is going to go down and we are going to see how it's going to be affecting our uh, application. So let's go and do a watch. So I've just put a watch so that we can see what's happening. And let me go to the FIS uh, console here. And here I can now start the experiment. So there is an actions tab here and I can do start. Uh, and I'm going to do the start experiment. So I can type start. Let's do the start experiment. Currently the state is initiating. It should go to running. So that's when we know it's going to trigger the termination. So now the state is running. Let's go to the instances and then we can see if any of the instances are going down. See that only one instance is showing up. This basically means I have something which is shutting down. These are some old instances which I already had. And also see there was some activity below. Right, I mean there was something which got moved here. Right now, uh, my other systems are getting terminated. So some of my pods are getting terminated. They are getting recreated. Right, I mean these are all in the pending state. So let me go to EC2, see what's the state. There is only one instance or one particular node group. So everything is going to be uh, created there. Right, I mean if you look at it, my EC2 instance got terminated right now. That's why I think all my uh, pods are getting terminated. All the pods are getting terminated. See that. Uh, let me just do a break and then I'll just do again. See, I think all or most of my EC2 instance, I think most of my pods are coming up. See that some of them are already running and they did not stop because I think they are running in one of the node group. The other things are all like um, coming up, right? I mean, if you look at it, pod, in, pod is initializing. So everything is now coming up in the same instance, right? All the pods are now moving into single instance because right now we have only one node group right so this is how you can run chaos experiment i just ran an experiment on terminating the node group node group is basically ec2 instance within the kubernetes ecosystem and we were able to see that the pods are going down and kubernetes started these in the other node group right so that's how we can confirm that the experiments are working and we can look at how our application is behaving aws fis is one of the newest service do try it out there are different options using which you can run these experiments if you have database connections you can have latency introduced you can have database restarts failovers etc all these are natively supported within fis by default right now unlike gremlin in gremlin we had to run some agents which were running within our containers and they were trying to shut down our instances but here fis is going to do that with just the roles which are going to provide here so we have to provide the role and the sts access and fis will automatically run these experiments on any of the aws services which you have connected to that's all i had for this particular video i will leave the links for the aws fault injection simulators documentation you can definitely take a look at them do try it out and then let me know how how it goes as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video Thank you very much.